I'm glad to be back. I know we missed last week because I was gone in Oklahoma City at the NRHA Derby. Ended up being a pretty darn good show. The numbers were huge. A ton of people there. Um, you know, everybody was following the restrictions they said to follow, but uh, went off great. I posted a little video of Apache and Rooster. Though they were the two that that made the level four open finals. Apache was uh, she was so good. Got a 219 and a half the first go around. And uh, I think she finished like 17th out of 38. Tried real hard. Um, stopped, stopped incredible. Got some really cool stopping pictures of her. And uh, added some more money to her record, which she now is over 50,000 in earnings. And you can see she looks no worse for the wear there. And she's gonna get a nice long break until the end of August for the NRBC. She was so good there, I think she's definitely secured her spot to go to the next derby. And she got hay all over me. Rooster actually won't be able to see him. He's out in turnout. We've, he's, he's getting a half a day just to, across the street, uh, just relaxing. He was, he was really good. He scored a 220 the first go around. The finals was like, it was bittersweet. I mean, he was, he, he, th there was parts that were amazing and I just had some big bobbles that I think were mainly my fault, just trying a little too hard. Um, I really felt like he had the ability to jump up and score the, you know, get the number that was needed to win. And, uh, you know, I swung for the fence and, and I missed this time. So, you know, I've, I'll, I'll come back to the drawing board. He too, I think will be ready to rock and roll in Tulsa for the NRBC. But I'm gonna give him a ton of, time, ton of time to relax. He was great, you know, healthy, everything feels good. But I'll tell you, the one thing that was on my mind as soon as I got back is I was thinking about Max, which that's the last time you guys saw me. We took Max in. He's nickering at me actually now, which that's a new thing. Happy to see me. But um, we took him in. We got him gelded. I went to load him on the trailer, and he was like, uh-uh, I'm not going in. And I was like, yeah, it could be stud-related. Maybe he needs some more work on, on trailering. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm there at the vet clinic. I wasn't going to spend hours upon hours loading that horse in the trailer in their parking lot. I just did what I had to to get him in, kind of like kids, you know, I'm not going to go training on my kids right there in the grocery store. I'm going to, let's get him out of there, then let's come back and work on it. I set the trailer up out there and I'm actually, you know, a bunch of you wanted to see it anyway. I'm going to work on getting him to load in the trailer right now because I do not want to have that happen again. You know, going to a show and horse can't get in the trailer, it's, you know, it's a, it's a little embarrassing. Got your mane braided now, Max, now that you're a sweet little gelding. And I went ahead and I put the trailer in the arena, make it a little easier, it's wide open. Of course, now he'll probably walk right in. So, you know, if you think you're gonna get into some major project, you know, you might need to put your splint boots on or your bell boots all the way around. I'm hoping it's not gonna be that big a deal. I'm gonna use the same pressure release methods that I use to train these guys. Oh, he's already getting excited about this trailer. It's probably going, why is the trailer in the middle of the arena? But uh, I'm thinking if I do this right, probably shouldn't take very long. It shouldn't be too big a deal for him to figure out where he's supposed to go. So much for the, uh, he's gonna just walk right into the trailer. I wasn't sure what's gonna happen because it was the six horse last time and now I've got the big eight horse out. So I'm gonna start off just kind of creeping him up close and, and see how much he'll, you know, how far he'll go before we get into having to work on something. Come here, Max. Come here, buddy. All right, so that's about as far as he wants to go. What I like to do before I start something, I try to have a plan, right, of how am I gonna get this horse to wanna to go in that trailer? And if I'm using pressure release, I've got a good friend of mine that uses this phrase all the time, really we all use it, he just, he says it all the time, is make the right thing hard, make the right thing easy, and the wrong, and the wrong thing hard, actually, I gotta get that right. Uh, buddy of mine, Warwick Schiller, does that all the time, really great horseman. I'm gonna use that, that thought process, so I just have to make things out here 
harder than they are in there. So I'm gonna do that by when I point him towards the trailer, I'm not gonna have any pressure on him, okay? If he backs away or refuses, I'm gonna apply pressure and today I'm gonna choose, I just have a halter and rope. I could buy, get all the, you know, all my cold starting gear out, but I don't think I need to do that. I hope not. But I'll start off by just putting pressure right here on his back, real literal. So pressure back here, and then when he walks forward, or if he walks forward, I release the pressure. Okay, that's my plan, how I think I'm gonna get this done. If he goes extreme and like really says, no, I don't wanna go, I might actually start working him as if I was lunging right out here, making him work, okay, making things hard, and then pointing back towards that trailer, make it easy. If I get to that point, I may need to get my rope halter out, maybe. Um, I don't know, but I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and start off just with my halter and rope, which is usually when stuff goes down, you don't have all your tools. So to start off, I just need to first make sure that he'll walk forward using this rope. There, so all I want right there, you saw I asked him to go forward. As soon as he moved forward. There, so now he responded to a voice cue. I'm giving him no pressure up here, just trying to get him to go forward. And he refuses, I'll just take this rope, put pressure on his back. And I'm trying to be careful, of course, to not let him walk on me. There we go. And I like this method a lot when I'm by myself. Could I have a second handler and be standing and have someone hand in, or holding him and be working a rope or a whip back here? Absolutely, but what if I didn't have that luxury? Okay, so now I've got him going forward. Now I'm gonna point him towards this trailer. And you know, and, and, and be smart, give him a chance to check it out. And I'm really trying to watch and see, is he really trying to figure out what to do or is he trying to figure out what not to do or is he not thinking about anything? As long as those wheels are spinning, I'll let him sit here and think about it. Okay, and then I'll come. Keep that pressure on, okay, there. So he started walking forward. You guys saw he wasn't walking towards the trailer, but he was walking forward. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a pass on that and release that pressure. As we get further in, and I think he under, ah, great, good boy. As I get further in and I feel like he understands what I want, I might ask a little more of him, which I think would be only fair. Very good. Once you kind of start getting a little progress like this, don't get greedy, okay? Just be happy you got up there, no big deal. And that's what I want to try to get him to see, that it's no big deal. This way, buddy. Just hang out here for a second, bud. I'm gonna try to hold him here if he just has to get down, no big deal. If I pulled him real hard there, he'd run backwards anyway. Watch your feet, guys, when you do this. So I make sure I keep a little pressure on him when he's going away from that trailer now. So I don't want him thinking that that's a escape route. If he thinks, oh wow, if I just kinda duck this ramp and go off to the left, he stops putting pressure on me. Well, that's where he's gonna wanna go. Right here, I'm just, see, I'm just kinda keeping this rope moving. He's so sensitive that this is still means pressure to him. Pretty interesting, he started licking his lips. I don't know if you guys saw that right before he went in. That's our classic sign of submission. I don't know, you know, it's, you never know what they're thinking about. But I think he was just kind of going, you know, I don't know if I really want to get in that trailer and he just kept kind of testing it, but he didn't put his whole heart into it. And then I went ahead and just let go of that rope, complete release of pressure. I kind of trusted, you know, he's, he's a pretty docile horse. I trusted he wasn't going to go in here and do something nuts. Pressure, make it hard outside make it easy inside. Then when he comes in here, you know, here's the spot. If I had a cookie or a carrot, I might give it to him. But uh, you know, and I don't even know that that's necessary. Just to release the pressure is plenty. He's going, man, it's a whole lot nicer in here than it is out there. So now that I've done that one time, 
I've got to do it a couple more times to make sure that he doesn't jump out like that and that he really understands because anybody can do it once. Let me try walking him in now the way I like to walk in. Really good. I'm going to back him out because if he was in one of these back slots of this eight horse, eight horse bloomer trailer, by the way, thank you, Randy Bloomer, um, he would have to back out. So I want to see if you can back out now. Take his time. Easy, 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 good. And make sure, you know, if your horse has any issue with loading, you know, take some time and do it, you know, do it not, don't, don't wait for the day of the horse show because then you're, you're, you're a little irritated, you know, you're, you're on edge or you're wanting to leave and you won't have as much patience. Yeah, Max, you, you're good now. He, uh, he's all healed up actually already too from the castration. I haven't ridden him yet today, so I think I'm going to ride him, but it was really driving me crazy that he didn't load in the trailer uh, for a lot of reasons. And uh, you saw about 15, 20 minutes, we got that knocked out. It'll work for any of your horses, stallion, mare, gelding, doesn't matter. Uh, you may have to adjust your formula. Maybe you work them out here, um, add more pressure that way, but it's very, very simple. You make things uncomfortable out here, and when he's pointed towards that tr beautiful trailer, that you leave them alone, release the pressure. If your horse has any brains at all, uh, and if you have any patience at all, enough time, they will figure that out. So, Max, let's take you back to the barn and go ride you now.